The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For the last 20 years, I have been in some stage of learning Spanish. I started like a lot of people do in high school, taking Spanish for four years, and then little by little over time learned the basics. In college, I continued and took a few semesters, but after that, I never took any more classes. But from time to time, I'd decide, all right, I'm going to study and learn Spanish. So I'd start watching Spanish-language TV shows, listening to Spanish-language podcasts, and reading the news in Spanish. Or at least I would for a few weeks. Then little by little, I'd watch and listen and read a little less until I was back in English and my idea to learn Spanish went away for another time. However, all this has changed in the last few years. In 2019, my wife and I began the process to become foster parents through Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services for children who are caught up in our immigration system who primarily come through our southern border. So it started again. I'm going to learn Spanish and again went through the same process. I was watching Spanish language television, reading in Spanish, all the ways that you're told to practice. And so finally, we were licensed in February of 2020. And of course, we all know what happened in March. So keeping it short, uh, just to say it took us a while for us to receive our first placement that next December. And so while we were waiting, I found myself reading, watching, and listening in Spanish less and less. But finally, after waiting, we did receive our first placement. And so this was a new situation, and I had two options. First, I could communicate what I needed to and hear what I needed to in Spanish. Or second, I wouldn't communicate it. Now, obviously, the second one wasn't an option, so I learned, and I learned quick. And with this attempt at learning Spanish, there really was a new urgency to learning that I didn't have before. And not learning was not an option. Today is Pentecost. So today we remember the miracle that the disciples received the gift of the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news of the gospel. And each who heard, heard in their own languages. There's a lot to this story, but I'm going to focus on this part. The gift of languages was given to ordinary people. Without a doubt, the disciples were called specifically by God for all of their ministry. But at the same time, these were fishermen, tax collectors, and other workers. They weren't what we would consider the elite, the most educated, the most set apart or holy. And the gift of Pentecost, part of the gift of Pentecost, is that the gift of the Holy Spirit came to the disciples and to the whole church. 
not that they could just speak other languages. Now the miracle is that the voice of God was not simply limited to a voice from heaven. It was in the hearts of all the believers. And that first Pentecost, the voice from heaven, was heard through the mouths of these normal men. And I know on Pentecost, we hear about the languages, we see that miracle, and in a lot of ways, it's the most visible that's in front of us in the text. We wonder what it might be like to sound, what it might sound like to hear that ourselves. But I think the real, mir- the real miracle is the transforming work of the Holy Spirit spoken through the mouths of ordinary people. This is the true gift and responsibility that we have too. We believe that in our baptism, we are given the same gift from God, the Holy Spirit, that works in our lives and in the life of the church. And we have the same mission as the disciples that Jesus gave in the final verses of Matthew. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As part of this church and with the call of the Spirit that we have received, we are part of the mission of God in the world. And so with this gift of the Holy Spirit we now have, we also have a responsibility to tell the story of Jesus and the salvation that he brought to the world. This message is transformative and is not just a promise in the next world, but is good news for all that changes in our lives right here, right now in this world. It is obvious in what is now a bilingual home, my need to really learn Spanish. And I just have to let you know, it hits you hard the first time you realize there's an eight-year-old looking back up with you and expecting you to be able to talk with them, and you're struggling to find the right words. Let me tell you, there is that very real sense of urgency. I hope it's just as obvious to us all. When we look around the world, there are a whole lot of people who need to hear the good news of God's grace in their lives. With all that's in the news every day, we see people and situations that obviously need the transformation that only comes from God. And we don't even need to watch the television to see that. It's in all of our communities, our friends, our family, people we know, love, and care about, whether they are co-workers, acquaintances. Each of us knows someone who could benefit from the gift of Christian community and fellowship, whose life would be positively touched with a kind word. And thanks to the gift of the Holy Spirit, each of us has been given this gift and power to make that change and to share this good news. At the same time, I see in many churches the lack of urgency to share these gifts with the world. We know the challenges. We know that we have found an answer for ourselves. We have ourselves been touched by the gospel. And yet somehow we struggle to share that with others. We see the problems of the world, we pray, but we ourselves are not prepared to share the good news that we have found. We have this gift of God, the Holy Spirit that can speak through us, and we struggle to use it. I hear a lot of, well, that's for the pastor, or I wish I had something to say or knew what the right thing to say was. But I'm promising you, as the baptized people of God, You all have a responsibility to embrace this gift of the Holy Spirit to speak. With this responsibility, though, is ultimately a promise. We are not alone in the world without God's help. With the gift of the Holy Spirit, the church is not alone in the world. In the first chapter of John, John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. On this day of Pentecost, we see the beginnings of this work continuing in the life of the church. And as the church who has received the gifts of the Holy Spirit, this means that you and I are not helpless in the face of the many challenges of the world. When we see all of the problems of the world in our lives, we're not completely unable to do anything because we have the Holy Spirit with us. Now, I don't want to say this means everything will always and forever be easy, Scripture tells us otherwise. But the work that we can do is important, meaningful, and moves us ever closer to the kingdom of heaven here on earth. For me, it was a change in my own thinking when I realized that Pentecost and the gift and the call 
to use the language that God gives us to tell people about the gospel. It took a while for me to realize that that was a promise and not just a scolding. It's not just a wag of the finger, go and proclaim the gospel. It's the promise of the gospel that has real consequences in this world. That the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus means that when we proclaim the gospel, God is with us, working with us. It is the promise that we take, it is the promise that when we take this responsibility seriously, when we live in this new reality of Christ, the world can and does change. The day of Pentecost was not a miracle that happened once and never more. The miracles of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the believers happen every day in this world. It is the foundation of the church and the foundation of our lives and our faith. God is with us. And when we live in that hope and that reality, it changes us so that we change the world. And so with the gifts of the Spirit and with the works of God through our hands, we celebrate today the reality that our proclamation of the gospel can change the world. When there is war, poverty, violence, and all of the struggles of life throughout the world, and when these problems exist in our own communities, I hope that we ourselves can see the urgency before us and the promise that God's work is here among us. I hope it is as present as that eight-year-old looking up to me and that urgency of realizing I need to learn. Because on that first day of Pentecost, through the mouths of 12 men, God changed the world. And for 2,000 years, God has used the believers to grow the church. And through the church, God has indeed changed the world. We celebrate today because we trust and believe that today this gift of the Holy Spirit continues. And when we proclaim God's goodness and work with God, we do indeed make a difference. Amen.